Hello everyone. Welcome to BISP Solutions. I am Tanvi Arora and I'm working here as a functional consultant. So in today's video, we are going to see the cash flow process in our Oracle FCCS application. So let's just go to the smart view that I've prepared. So this is my Excel sheet and uh, this is my balance sheet. Okay. So basically holding company that is E101 has made an uh, investment in my subsidiary company that is E102 of 60% and the investment amount is 70,000. Okay. So uh, this investment uh, that is showing here is basically an intercompany transaction, which will get eliminated this investment will get eliminate when we do the consolidation process. Okay. So you can see that I have defined all my uh, assets and liabilities. This, these are my fixed assets and total of which is this. Then uh, this is at the consolidated level. Okay. This is at the consolidated level. So I've taken uh, investment in subsidiary uh, is 70,000 and which will get at the consolidated level, which will become zero finally. Then these are my debtors, inventory uh, and cash. And uh, these are the total of that. Then in the liability side, I have common stock, which is called my share capital. So uh, you can see that after consolidation, only the common stock of the holding company is considered. This uh, one lakh uh, common stock gets eliminated. Then these are the retained earnings, basically whatever the profits that I have earned in the year. And uh, this is 45,000. Uh, this minority interest retained earning calculation and this goodwill calculation we have to do separately. So I have working notes uh, for this and we'll see how this figure is coming. Then we have uh, liabilities which are long term liabilities. Then we have short term liabilities as well in which we have creditors. Okay. So now uh, first we will see the calculation of these three that is goodwill retained earning and minority interest so what is my goodwill basically whatever investment the holding company has made in subsidiary so we consider that investment and minus the net assets of my subsidiary so here I'll just change the name it's E102 so uh, this holding company has made 60% of investment. Now, how this is uh, net, net assets uh, is coming, I'll tell you the calculation. So I have taken the share capital of my subsidiary. You can see I have li linked with this sheet. Common stock of my subsidiary is 1 lakh and 60% share is of holding because it has made 60% investment. That's why it is coming as 60,000 and the investment that has been made is 70,000. So the difference is uh, 10,000. Now this is positive. That's why it is goodwill. If it was, it uh, must uh, like it would have been negative balance. So it would have been a capital reserve. Okay. This is goodwill. Now, retained earnings calculation we do by combining the retained earnings of the holding and uh, uh, like share of the holding in the uh, retained earnings of the subsidiary, basically. Okay. So, retained earning of the subsidiary companies is, uh, I have just linked this 25,000 and its holding shares is 60%. So, which uh, total ups to 45,000. And then minority interest calculation is whatever uh, part is left in the share capital plus the retained earnings, whatever percentage is left belongs to the NCI, that is non-controlling interest or the minority people. So these are 40, 40,000. This is uh, share capital 40% and this is retained earning 40%. Now we'll verify these figures after running the business rule of consolidation from our output sheet. Okay. Then this is my input sheet. And as you can see, I've already defined all the, I've already inputted all the figures in this and uh, I've already defined all my POVs here. I've defined for the assets and the liabilities. And this, these are my uh, like income and salary bifurcation, which ultimately go, go, will go to my retained earnings calculation. Okay. And this is my investment, which will get eliminated. Okay. So these are, uh, you can see, this is my intercompany partner. Uh, East 101 has made an investment in East 102. This is my intercompany partner. Okay. So this is at the uh, uh, intercompany level, basically. And uh, the rest two hours at uh, no intercompany. Okay. Oh, this is only the one transaction, which is of intercompany. 
so now i as i have already done everything here and uh, the next step is to go to the application and just define the ownership structure and then run the business rule of consolidation to verify our figures basically so i've already uh, done these processes but again i'll show this how we define everything so in uh, from the application this is the home page of my application from application we go to consolidation and then we define our uh, correct pov so uh, this is plan this is january period this is 2015 and then we click on this arrow but i've already defined everything so i'll just search for my uh, entity which is east so as you can see that i've already defined now uh, this is 100% this is holding company and control is yes and uh, for this east 102 it is my subsidiary and i have 60% investment i'm the holding company i have 60% investment so the application automatically calculates this the rest 40% which belongs to minority interest person then after defining this ownership structure i have to save the changes which i've already done and from this action step i click on this recompute ownership data so once this is done then uh, what you have to do from the navigator or from the home page also you can go uh, you have to go to data and uh, then run the business rule of consolidation okay so uh, this uh, pov first i have to check this is correct then uh, i will see that my entities uh, see in the month of uh, this it has uh, like it has been impacted okay system change or impacted uh, status is the same thing and once i run this uh, from actions i run the business rule of consolidation which i have already done i just launch this rule from consolidate i'll select my uh, correct entity that is uh, in this corporate companies total company and it is uh, total this one okay and once i select this and uh, period uh, i have to particularly take as january not whole quarter one okay and this everything is fine here and then we'll just launch this rule okay i have already done all this process so let's go to our output sheet after this process has been done we just verify this all these things from our output sheet that i have prepared so let's just verify the figures now after all these things you have to refresh this sheet so uh, let's do that so uh, these are the members i have taken at the topmost level okay so these are the top level members and uh, as you can see that uh, this is uh, total e100 this is the uh, top member entity top level entity and then uh, these two entities got uh, consolidated and this is at the elimination level that i have taken what things got eliminated so let's just see the result at the topmost level so this is intercompany top and see we'll verify each one of them goodwill was 10000 okay first of all we'll see whether our debtors are getting combined uh, because after consolidation the uh, assets of the holding and the liabilities of the holding gets consolidated with the subsidiary companies and at the consolidated level you see the total of it so see uh, this is coming to 45000 inventory got uh, consolidated 80000 then cash got consolidated so this is like this and uh, similarly with this okay now for goodwill 10000 we have already created this excel sheet and we can verify our goodwill figure from this 10000 it is coming 10000 which is correct then our common stock uh, we only uh, like after consolidation only the common stock of holding uh, comes so this 1 lakh will get eliminated you can see at the elimination level this 1 lakh is getting eliminated then minority interest was 50000 for which we have already seen the calculation here in my uh, uh, prepared excel sheet minority interest 50000 we can verify from here and then uh, what else retained earnings comes to 45000 which you can verify from here i have working note and i have explained this 
and you can see that the investment that was made in the subsidiary that is 70,000 got eliminated which comes to zero and here the investment will be zero. So after all these things, uh, how the cash flow is prepared now for this cash flow. So uh, basically FCCS application with the help of movement dimension automatically prepares the cash flow. So while uh, here in my input sheet, while I was uh, inputting the figures on the numbers, I've already defined the respective movement. You can see uh, the movements for all the accounts here, balance sheet items here. So everything is defined like for current assets or for debtors, it is changes in accounts receivable, inventory material, Value is changes in inventories. Okay. For uh, long-term uh, liabilities, we can see changes due to proceeds from debt. So uh, it takes into consideration these movements and then the cash flow gets automatically prepared and we'll see the process of it. Okay. So when you go to our cash flow sheet, I've already prepared it. Basically what I have done, I've copied all the accounts and then I've defined the movement uh, at the closing level. Okay. Closing balance level. So, and in my output sheet also, I've taken the movement as closing balance. So when you see this cash flow, okay. So th uh, these are the, basically I have defined the top level members only. And these are the balance sheet items and these are the movements, okay. With respect uh, to which I have entered the numbers. So it automatically calculates what will be the cash flow from my operating activity and uh, from my investing activity and my financing activity. And uh, this is the difference. This 50,000 is the difference between the three activities, which is called as closing cash. So we will see the working of each one of them. Okay. Now I'll go to my Excel sheet again. This is my working of the cash flow. Now this is uh, the cash flow from operating activity. Okay. These are the three activities you can see. This is my operating activity. Then this is uh, the cash flow from my investing activity and this is the cash flow from my financing activity. So basically the process starts with uh, calculation of the net profit, but uh, we'll start with the net profit and then we add all the operating activities items and then we add investing and financing activities, okay, to get to the closing balance, closing cash balance. But what happens is in our FCCS application, we have net profit as a part of operating activities only. Okay. This is not a separate thing in our FCCS application. It is a part of operating activity only. Okay. So this comes under operating activities. Uh, like when we open our FCCS application and when we see the movement dimension, that is FCCS underscore cash flow. So with this movement, only the cash flow gets prepared. Okay. So under FCCS cash flow operating um, uh, under this, we see that FCCS uh, under operating activities, we see that cash flow net income comes. Okay. So this is a predefined structure. Okay. In our application. So that's why it is coming under uh, operating activity. Now from where it is coming this 55,000, uh, you can see the retained earnings total. Okay. This is the calculated part. 45,000 we have taken because this is linked. Okay. But Actual retained earnings uh, for uh, uh, E1 E one zero one sub that is holding and subsidiary is fifty five thousand. You can see the total here. So this is my net profit because uh, the total of the detained earnings is my net profit only. Then debtors is minus forty five thousand. You can see that uh, my debtors are forty five thousand, but I'm assuming something here. Okay, that. Yeah, so we are assuming that uh, the debtors are increasing. Now, if my debtors are increasing, so what will happen? Uh, the cash of the enterprise is getting blocked. Okay, we are not receiving any cash. We are uh, doing credit sales and we are not receiving any cash. So my cash got blocked for some time. That's why we are just mine, uh, deducting this amount from the net profit because no cash is coming. Okay, then inventory, uh, because we have purchased the inventory, the inventory figure is 80,000. And uh, as you can see, we are assuming that we have already purchased this inventory. This is an outflow that that's why it is getting deducted. Then creditors, creditors amounts to 90,000. Okay, now 
um from creditors we have basically uh, we are assuming that uh, we have received the amount okay we have taken some loan uh, so those persons are called creditors and uh, we have received some amount short term from short term creditors so it is inflow of cash sorry here it is inflow of cash that's why we are uh, adding this so this is the net effect of all these four things that comes to uh, 20000 basically so this will be my net cash from operating activity okay so whatever cash is going and whatever cash is coming we consider this in operating activity now what is uh, cash flow from investing activity okay so whatever uh, okay now this 20000 is getting tallied with my cash flow sheet now this has been calculated by the application itself okay when i run that consolidation rule uh, after defining my ownership structure and when i refresh this sheet you can see that it is tallying getting tallied 20000 with my uh, this excel sheet calculation here okay and uh, this i have taken it at the topmost level that is total balance sheet traditional approach okay now we will verify uh, the other things, the investing activity part. Now investing activity is uh, whatever investments we have done comes under investing activity. So uh, we have done 60% of investment in our subsidiary. It means it is outflow of cash as we are investing the amount. Okay. So that's why we are, uh, because we have done 70,000 investments. So we'll take it as minus. Then machinery. We are assuming that we have purchased these machineries. So uh, let me show you the figure of machinery. See, 2,20,000. We are assuming that we have purchased. So, we are taking it as minus. And then one of the machinery, uh, what we have purchased, we sold it. Okay. We sell. So, 1 lakh comes as inflow. Then net, because 1 lakh, you can verify from here that uh, machinery is 1 lakh. We uh, sold this machine after some time. Okay, so this is the income that is coming. That's why it is getting added. And this uh, comes to the total of all these three comes to minus 1,90,000. Now comes the uh, cash flow from financing activities. Okay, so basically uh, this is common stock and it comes to 1,50,000 because the common stock of only holding company will be considered uh, while calculating the cash flow. Okay, and because that the subsidiary common stock is getting eliminated. So, uh, because we have issued the stock, okay, we have raised this share capital. That's why we are raising money from our shareholders. That's why it is getting added. And for this uh, creditors, uh, these are long-term payables, but we have taken money from them on uh, credit and we are receiving this money, okay? Like uh, we have raised uh, issued debentures. So basically we are uh, raising money from them. That's why it is getting, it is a plus sign uh, figure, okay? This, I'm, this I have taken from this uh, 70,000 here. So these are my assumptions for this and uh, the total of which comes to 2,20,000. Now, uh, which is getting tallied with my output sheet that I have prepared. 20,000 got tallied. Minus 1,90,000, you can see it is coming as uh, it is already calculated. It is also getting tallied. And this uh, cash flow from financing activities, even this get tallied. Okay. 2,20,000. Now, the remaining thing is this 50,000, uh, which is my closing balance of the cash. How this is coming? See, net cash from activities now this 50000 is basically the um, sum of all these three activities that is 20000 plus minus 1 lakh uh, 90000 and uh, 2 lakh 20000 so when i add these three it will come to 50000 and uh, i have no uh, because i'll deduct my opening cash balance opening balance of cash but as i have taken january period and uh, this is the first year and financial year 2015 i have taken this is the first uh, period in the uh, year which is created in the application so there is no opening cash with me so my closing cash comes to 50000 which gets tallied with this so this is the complete process and thank you so much